Okay, welcome to our introductory data journalism lab where we're going to teach you to do some very basic data analysis using a spreadsheet tool, uh, Google Sheets, that some of you may have used before. Uh, and as we will for much of the semester, we're going to be doing analysis on a newly released database detailing opioid pill shipments during the height of the opioid epidemic that helped drive tens of thousands of opioid deaths in the United States. Um, here is a story uh, from the Washington Post, uh, who in partnership with the uh, Charleston, West Virginia Gazette Mail, um, sued for the release of this database from the DEA. It's called Arcos. Um, it was kept secret for years out of public view. Uh, and the efforts of these two news organizations uh, helped finally bring this into the light. Um, and the Post, uh, to their great credit, um, has uh, taken the raw data and made much of it available to the public um, that they got through this records request um, in multiple forms. Some very small slices that are easy to analyze, as well as the, um, the raw data. Uh, so here's just a quick example of a map that the Post produced. Um, showing that the number of pills per person for um, select opioids, hydrocodone uh, and oxycodone, um, how they were distributed across the country uh, from 2006 to 2012, the period uh, for which they have the data. Uh, and you can see that in, in certain places, the, um, the number of pills that were distributed from pharmaceutical companies to distributors to pharmacies um, were fairly high uh, uh, when adjusted per person. So, um, for example, here in Appalachia, you're seeing some rates of 179, uh, 203 pills per person per year. Um, the country for many years, uh, and still in many ways, was awash in um, uh, prescription opioids that were often then um, uh, taken out of the system, um, abused by people, leading to um, uh, tens of thousands of overdoses. Uh, so uh, from this data, which was released this summer, the Post and the Gazette Mail have produced uh, lots of important stories based on it, um, holding accountable drug companies, um, pharmacies, distributors, um, uh, and government officials uh, who um, had some hand um, uh, uh, in allowing this uh, to go on unchecked. So the headline from the Post was uh, on the day they released this story, a very rich investigative story in many ways based on the data and other reporting. 76 billion opioids, newly released federal data unmasks the epidemic and some of the findings were uh, truly startling. Uh, so this database um, uh, has way more information in it, way more potential stories, possible stories, than one or two organizations can possibly do on their own. So the Post, uh, again, to their great credit, has put a call out for other journalists to use this data to find their own local uh, and national stories. And in their words, they said, the Post believes this is a critically important set of data which is why we are making it public and accessible to readers and other journalists. We think there are hundreds of stories within this data set and need your help to understand what it means to you and your uh, community. So um, journalists uh, across the country have been um, uh, jumping in, trying to um, uh, build on the post work uh, and people from Alabama to uh, Arizona to California to Colorado to Florida, Maine, uh, some in Maryland, um, are producing stories based on this. Um, so uh, we, as a class, uh, are going to get in on this action. Uh, uh, of course, this is an introductory data journalism class, so we're going to learn to do um, data analysis uh, and, and data journalism while also trying to find stories in this data set that no one has ever told before. Um, so we're going to start with a pretty small slice of the data um, to learn the, uh, the basics of journalistic data analysis. And as the semester goes on and we move from um, Google Sheets to using uh, more uh, advanced data programming tools, um, uh, we are going to progressively work with larger and more complicated slices of the data, um, uh, even combining it with other data sets to um, identify interesting questions and then answer them. Um, 
So for this exercise today, we're going to start uh, by thinking like a, a journalist um, uh, with a question we want to answer. Uh, and the question we want to answer is um, we want to identify, uh, or rather, as part of this, uh, I'm telling you that we've, we're going to identify a place that has been particularly hard hit by the opioid crisis, uh, and that is West Virginia and Appalachia. Uh, which had the country's highest death rate from opioid overdoses uh, during the period this data covers. Um, and within West Virginia, we're going to drill in to a, a county there, uh, Mingo County, which uh, was particularly awash in prescription opioids during this period. And again, it's hydrocodone and oxycodone that we're looking at. Um, so Mingo County is on the border of West Virginia and Kentucky, and you can kind of see it right here in this great interactive map the Post has produced. Um, so on average, per person per year, there were 200 pills per person being sent to this county, um, which was one of the higher rates in the entire um, country. Um, uh, and the Post has generated this nice little automatically generated box with some information about um, there were 38 million pain pills sent there from 2006 to 2012. Um, and there's some information about the biggest distributors, manufacturers, and pharmacies, the people at every link of the chain that ended with um, prescription opioids getting uh, in, into these counties. Uh, so today we're gonna start pretty simple. Um, and our motivating question here is, um, uh, which pharmacies in the county were most responsible for bringing opioids there um, into Mingo County? Um, sort of the local front line, you know, people actually um, doing the on the ground distribution of, of these medications. Um, that's a question we can answer um, with data, in fact, with this database, um, and then use that as a foundation, and we'll talk a lot about that in this class, to shape other kinds of reporting. Um, we have several different ways we're going to look at it today as we learn the basics of spreadsheet uh, driven data journalism. So we're going to start by downloading the data for Mingo County. Uh, just the pharmacy's data. So I'm on the post page, and if you just Google the opioid files drilling into the DEA's pain pill database, uh, you'll get to this page. Um, I'm also going to provide a link directly to the, the, the file um, in the GitHub repo so you, uh, for the class, so you'll be able to pull it down there. Um, and the link to this will also be up on the, the course GitHub rep repo as well. Uh, okay, so I'm just downloading the pharmacy data. If I downloaded this data, it would give me a lot of really um, detailed data, like on a shipment by shipment level for different kind of pills, the different pharmacies. We're going to work with this data later in the class, but for now, we're just going to use something um, pretty simple. So I'm just going to download this. And uh, got it here. Uh, in my downloads folder. So um, this is a TSV file that may be sort of new for you all. Um, this is, a, it stands for tab separated values. It's a sort of stripped down spreadsheet. Um, what's important for us is that uh, it's gonna load really easily into Google, Google Drive. So I'm gonna go to Google Drive. So you all should have an account and I'm going to create uh, a new sheet. And I'm going to call this Lab One Data Journalism Spreadsheet. And uh, if you've never used this before, um, I've also posted some sort of primers on using Google Google Sheets. But um, this is an online version of my Microsoft Excel. If if you've used that previously. Um, uh, Excel has some advantages. It can work with a little bit bigger data, um, but for the most part, uh, Google Sheets is, uh, you know, a, a, a really great tool, and it's free. So, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to upload this data. So, I'm going to go to Import, and I'm going to click Upload, and I'm just going to drag this file in. And you can see it's Arcos, that's the name of this database, West Virginia, Mingo County, and the pharmacy data. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's probably what's called a FIPS code for the state and county for West Virginia, Mingo County. 
Uh, so we're going to create a new spreadsheet. Um, the separator type, this is um, what keeps um, uh, columns separated, and we'll see how the spreadsheets are structured into rows and columns. Um, uh, there's different ways of doing this. So there's what's called a, a tab delimited file where you use the tab to separate them. Comma is kind of common too. Um, so we're just going to say tab because I know this is tab delimited, but detect automatically would be fine. And then uh, convert text to numbers, dates, and formulas. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. So I'm going to import it. And gonna go ahead and open it. Okay, so uh, this is a spreadsheet. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, clean up the name a little bit. So we're gonna call this um, Arcos Mingo West Virginia Pharmacy Analysis. Okay, uh, so yeah, so this is a spreadsheet. Uh, this is uh, tidy data. This is generally when we're working with structured data, we want it organized in this nice format, which is organized into um, uh, rows and columns. Uh, and then each bit of information is inside of a cell. Uh, so uh, if you've never seen a spreadsheet before, I'm just gonna walk through this if you have, you. You may want to just skip ahead slightly. Uh, so each row is a discrete um, record uh, or observation. Um, and what we're seeing here is that there's one record per uh, pharmacy in Mingo County, West Virginia, as reflected in the data. Um, so that's why all of the buyer state. So these columns here are um, uh, variables or fields, they're sometimes called. So each pharmacy um, has a bunch of properties associated with it. So each pharmacy is in West Virginia. Each pharmacy is in Mingo County. We can see that. Uh, each pharmacy has a DEA number. These are controlled substances. And so the pharmacies are um, assigned a specific number by the government. Uh, there is uh, the buyer name. So this is the pharmacy. Um, all of them usually have the name pharmacy. Sometimes they don't exactly. Um, uh, uh, some appear maybe not like traditional pharmacies. Uh, there's the city within the county. Total dosage unit, this is the number of uh, um, units of hydrocodone uh, or oxycodone that were shipped. Um, and then the number of records, uh, uh, I don't know this for sure. We would need to d dig into what's called documentation to, to find this out. Uh, but it appears that uh, this would be the number of uh, discrete shipments, but uh, gonna have to double check on, on that. Um, it's always very, very important to know uh, what it is specifically that you're, um, uh, uh, that you're referring to um, uh, when you're making assumptions based on, on data that you're working with. Um, so in this case, we can see from the post, right, that this Stroh Snyder in Kermit this pharmacy, 13.16 um, million, 13 million pills, um, which matches this number here. So dosage units, with, uh, they actually looked a, a, around and around for good documentation from the post on this, and I couldn't find it, so I'm gonna reach out to them to see if I can get it, um, which is an important step before publishing anything based on it. Uh, but this appears to be the number of pills, and th this, I guess, would probably be the number of shipments, if I had to guess. Um, but you never wanna guess when publishing based on it, Always want to find out, and the way to do that is to go to the original source. Uh, okay, so everything's arrayed in rows and columns. Um, data is inside of a cell. It's tidy. It's clean. Um, when you come to a spreadsheet, before you start doing analysis, there are a bunch of sort of basic checks and things you want to do just to make sure that you can, um, uh, you can start um, proceeding with analysis and not have anything get in the way. Um, with bigger data sets and messier data sets, this is a very clean data set. Uh, there's actually typically a long period of cleaning and normalizing before you can actually get down to the fun stuff, which is figuring out questions to ask and starting to, to do stuff. Um, 
Okay, so it's all contained in a single table here. Um, and uh, we're going to be using a lot of terms in this class, but um, this is a, what we would call a spreadsheet or a table. Um, sometimes you can have multiple spreadsheets within a single workbook. So if I were to add a new spreadsheet here, and we'll just uh, add some stuff in here. Um, uh, this would be a second spreadsheet within the workbook. Um, uh, sometimes uh, a given collection of data will have multiple spreadsheets or multiple tables, um, and especially if they're sort of linked together and designed to operate together, more traditionally you would call that a, a database. Um, just one note too, uh, as data journalists, we often work with um, not just these sort of tidy structured data sets, um, we also work with unstructured data sets, um, things like big repositories of free text, like email, um, email dumps, or lots of court files, and do um, language natural language processing on them. Um, most of this course, we're really going to be working with what's called structured data, and by that we mean typically organized into rows and columns. Okay, so some basic chaps we want to do. Um, first thing I always like to do when I'm working with a data set is um, preserve a copy of the original. So uh, I am going to start by saying um, original do not edit and I'm going to click here and hold down command and C. You can also right click to copy. I'm going to create a new sheet and I'm just going to call this working and command V or paste to paste it in. Um, okay, another thing I'd like to always do is um, uh, help out future me by preserving information about where I got the data um, uh, so I am not going crazy later. Um, this is also important if people want to reproduce your work, and we'll talk a lot about that as we go through the course. Um, uh, that we really, really want to have um, some kind of record that somebody can go start from scratch and reproduce your work to fact check it. All right, so the source for this is going to be uh, the Washington Post's opioid project, post opioid Arcos files, and put in a link. By the way, you see how this is like um, getting uh, sort of wrap there. I can right click and uh, or actually I can click here format. Uh, okay so I type this and see how it's getting uh, cut off here. Um, you just can hit this little button here and it will wrap the text uh, which is nice. Uh, so you can actually read everything. Uh, so I put in a link um, I put in the date that I access, accessed it. Uh, so August 25, 2019. Uh, details, uh, uh, pharmacy shipments, 2006 to 2012. Uh, Mingo County, West Virginia. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to our original working copy of the data here. Um, uh, so we're going to do uh, something called a, a four corners check here, which is to start in the upper left, go all the way to the bottom right, um, and just ask yourself some sort of basic questions about the data. Um, as we go into more complicated data sets, um, uh, you're more likely to run into sort of big problems. This, uh, as a data set, is um, the end result of a lot of uh, analysis and processing on the posts, posts part. Um, so it does appear to be um, remarkably clean. But things I'm looking for are, are there any missing values? Uh, empty cells for some reason? If so, what does that mean? There aren't in this case. Um, uh, uh, are we seeing sort of weird, um, you know, are there numbers with letters in the middle of it? Um, uh, 
do dates look strange? Uh, something I often look for is, um, are there any calculated columns that um, whoever is providing you the data, this is really common with like city budget documents that they've provided to you um, uh, that you may have to redo to, to double check. Um, uh, so yeah, so um, a thing I also like to do with um, a working copy of a data set is to add a, a record number uh, if for some reason later on um, we want to sort it back to the sort of original way this is here for us. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to insert a new column to the left and I'm going to call this record number. Notice I'm using underscores not spaces. Um, it's just a very good idea to not use spaces in the names of columns. Um, it doesn't matter quite as much when you're using Google Sheets uh, but when we get into R and other programming languages later on uh, it becomes sort of handy. All right, so I uh, just typed in there and hit enter. Um, just notice too when I type, I can also type up here too, uh, and it shows up in the cell. So this little like formula editing bar it's called. Okay, so I'm just gonna write the number one in there. I'm gonna write the number two in there. And I'm gonna select both of these. So I, I did that by holding down shift and clicking or shift in the down arrow. And then you'll notice here too, this is a little bit sort of tricky, but there are different kinds of cursors in Google Sheets. So there's like the regular arrow, there's the hand that allows you to like move stuff around, which is really not that good to be honest. Um, and then uh, there's also this little like plus button that happens when you hover over a highlighted cell in the corner. So this is a really handy thing. So instead of like having to type like three and then four, which it wouldn't be that bad. This only has 17 cells, but um, let's say you had a million records. You definitely wouldn't want to do that. So I can select it and then double click to drag down and it fills in. That's weird. In Excel, you can double click here, um, but in Google Sheets, I'm not sure you can, but I can just fill down there um, like that. Uh, okay, so now we've got our uh, our record number. Um, also, um, highlighting and selecting things is kind of an important skill to have uh, when using spreadsheets. Um, just something to, um, to keep in mind that you can um, select things, you can copy and paste, um, and just uh, also be mindful of the different kinds of cursors. Um, another thing I like to do is, um, is freeze panes. Um, so this when we scroll down, we'll like fix, um, right now when we scroll down, right, the top here, uh, the header column. So our first row, almost always in a spreadsheet is gonna be, um, is gonna be what we call a, like a header column. Um, and uh, it's helpful, especially in really long data sets to uh, be able to always see what's happening. Like if you get way down here, you can't tell like, is this the DEA number or is this number of pills? Is this number of shipments? Um, so we can freeze them. So uh, I'm going to go up to uh, uh, view, freeze. So we're going to freeze the first row. So now when I scroll down, it stays sticky. Pretty nice, right? Uh, we can also freeze columns. Um, sometimes this is more useful, um, you know, uh, I don't see it as being particularly useful in this data set, but if you wanted to do that, we could go to freeze and then first column. And now when we scroll this way, um, this is helpful when your data is really wide as opposed to super long. Uh, by wide, I mean lots and lots of columns. Um, so the other thing too is, you know, this is a very nice tidy data set, structured really well. Um, a thing I want to impress upon you is to not be haphazard, uh, to move deliberately. And when you are editing a spreadsheet or um, doing analysis, um, just take extra caution to make sure you know what you're doing, to pay attention, because every time you do something sort of carelessly or without thinking, um, then, uh, uh, mistakes can be made and uh, or rather you can make a mistake uh, that could lead to a correction in the, in the story and that's um, really important. It's also really important to be organized because you always want somebody else, an editor, a colleague, somebody on the outside 
to fact check the work that you're doing. And in order for them to do that, you really need to present them with like a nice, tidy, well-structured spreadsheet that isn't just like random things being filled in in columns or things unlabeled. So be super organized. Uh, one last thing I wanna show you before we um, move to our like first little bit of data analysis uh, is uh, formatting cells. So these are giant numbers. Uh, this could be 131 million or 13 million. I'm not really sure. It'd be nice to have some commas in here. You can do all kinds of formatting within Google Sheets. So I'm gonna select this entire range of cells by holding down shift. Um, and then I'm gonna go up to, um, up to here in the toolbar. So under more formats, if I just select automatic, it'll select it as a number. Um, all these are 0 .00, so there's not much point having a decimal, so I can reduce the number of decimal places. Now this is easier to see, right? 13 million. Uh, I'm probably gonna do this to my, the same one here. So we're gonna make this uh, number and then reduce that down. Uh, that's probably all of the things we wanna, we wanna do for right now. Uh, okay, so um, we're gonna start uh, our data analysis with, um, uh, if you go back to our motivating question was, um, who are the pharmacies or the places in Mingo County um, who were most responsible uh, for spreading um, uh, uh, the largest number of uh, prescription opioids um, in this county where there were, was a uh, particularly high rate of opioids being spread. Uh, so one way we can uh, do that is sort of break that main question down into sort of micro questions. So uh, a, a good question we might start with is um, which, uh, uh, which pharmacy uh, shipped uh, the most uh, or had, had shipped to it the most prescription opioids? So um, uh, one way we can answer that question, there are many ways to answer that question actually, but we can... Um, uh, we can sort. So a thing I'm going to do is go up to data, uh, sort sheet by column G, A to Z. So column G, we see here, right? Every single row has a number, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, every column has a letter. So, uh, and therefore every cell can be referred to by a combination of that letter. So this right here is cell G, Two. So um, I could just sort by column G, A to Z. And what does that do? It automatically sorts the whole sheet from highest, oh, sorry, sorry, from lowest, this uh, David Nielsen, to highest. Okay. Uh, well, we didn't want the lowest one to be at the top for this question. We actually want the highest one. So I'm going to go back to uh, sort sheet by column G, Z to A. So this is uh, in descending order. The other way was ascending. Uh, and we can see the answer to our question is that this uh, Stroh Snyder Pharmacy in Kermit um, had the most um, pills, uh, 13, 13 million, uh, which is something you could use to uh, uh, do some additional reporting based on if, uh, if you know that. Who is that pharmacy? Uh, how did it get that way? Did the government know about them? Um, were there lawsuits filed against them? Lots of things we can do with that, but they're, they're noteworthy and they, they stand out. Um, sorting you have to be careful with. Uh, Google has actually built in a lot of like fail safes against this, but a, a thing you would never ever want to do is say select one column and sort this range by column E, A to Z. Because look what happened. All of the other data around it stayed all the same, but this is now in alphabetical order. That's a huge problem because if you reported that this Adkins Pharmacy had 13 million pills shipped to it, you would be wrong. Uh, we're gonna undo that. Stroh Snyder has 13 million. Adkins only had 1.5. I mean, only, it's still a lot. Um, so be really careful about not just highlighting one column and sorting it can lead to major, major problems for you um, down the road. So we can short, sort alphabetically, we can sort um, uh, uh, sort numerically, highest to lowest, um, 
a thing I like to do always just to make sure that I'm actually sorting the entire sheet is just click in this box up here to select the entire range. So now um, if I go to sort range, instead of just doing by column G, if I go to data sort range, get this nice data has a header row. And now you can say like, I want to sort by say fire city and this will sort and group together all of the, the ones. So if you just cared, say, about Gilbert, you could easily see that um, uh, this Gilbert Pharmacy, the most in that town was with this uh, Riverside Riverside Pharmacy. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to go back and sort it the way this sheet originally was, sort by column A, A to Z. Uh, uh, and you'll notice, by the way, that this is how it was sorted when it came from the, from the post, uh, which was uh, really helpful. Uh, okay, so in addition to sorting, uh, we can do um, we can do a lot of math, arithmetic, which um, is really handy. Um, so if we wanted to say um, find out the total number of pills shipped to this county, um, we could um, sum or add up this entire row. So um, uh, we'll do that with a formula. Um, so first I'm just going to create this nice little, I'm going to put this in bold and I'm going to write um, totals down here. And I'm actually going to highlight this entire row by clicking on this gray box and bolding the entire row. And then we're going to do um, some addition. And uh, this is a uh, pretty um, there are several ways to do this. Um, I'll show you the most uh, laborious one first and then show you sort of easier ways. Um, so we can start, um, we could do equals G2 plus G3 plus G4 plus G5. Okay, my hands are like already getting tired. I really do not want to type all of these. I mean, it's doable with 17 records, but A, Anytime you're doing something like that, you're introducing the possibility of mistakes. Maybe I skip one by accident, even though when I'm typing the cell, it gets this really handy box around it. Uh, the other thing is if you're doing it with like a, you know, a million records, it's just going to be, you're not going to be able to do it. There wouldn't be enough hours in the day. You've got more important stuff to do. So um, uh, there's a great function called sum. So all functions or math or addition always start with the equal sign in Excel. Uh, sorry, in Google Sheets. So now I'm going to hit type sum. So this is a function. Uh, what is a function? A function is a, um, a little bit of computer code or programming um, that takes some data, some inputs, um, uh, and um, uh, produces some, um, uh, some output. So in this case, sum, we tell it which things to add up and it does it for us. So I'm going to do sum. Uh, Google's actually nice to suggest the range here. So I'm going to write the first cell I want sum. So G2. And then the last one, G17. So you see how this little box adds up. And it tells me right away there were 38.269 million pills shipped to Mingo over this period. Um, and Let's just go look at the post just to fact check ourselves. 38.269 million prescription pain pills, enough for 203 people per year. Uh, okay. Uh, there's also um, ways to do um, ways to do sums from uh, from formulas up here. So um, all of the this is we're just scratching the surface of what what Excel or uh, what Google Sheets can do, but um, sum is a formula, average is a formula for, you guessed it, taking the average, um, counting, taking the maximum value in a distribution, the minimum value, we're gonna walk through each of those. Um, so, uh, here's a nice thing about formulas too. We can actually drag them to copy across. So instead of rewriting if I want to do the sum of total records, if I want to do equal sum H2, H17, I could type that again, or 
I can just click on this little box, I give it a little plus cursor, drag it, and it's smart enough to know because I've dragged the cell over to here, uh, I can see that um, uh, what I want it to be referring to is H2 to H17. Really handy, really nice. Always good to click in the cell and just make sure it's actually like doing what you think it's, uh, think it's doing. Uh, okay, so um, we can also do subtraction. So say the question I wanted to um, ask was um, how many pills uh, in, how many pills were sent to Mingo County uh, to pharmacies other than Stroh Snyder's, Stroh um, And again, remember I can use my handy little wrap text thing. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. Okay, and um, this uh, we can use subtraction. This is a good uh, uh, a good example for this. So we have our total, right, thirty eight point two million, and we know how many were sent to Stroh Snyder. So a thing we could do is just equals G seventeen, sorry, G eight eighteen minus G two. So that gives us the total, which included Stroh Snyder, and takes out the uh, the 13 million pills sent to Stroh Snyder. So the answer there is uh, 25 million. Um, by the way, I'm notice I'm keeping this sort of in order. Got my totals. To how many pills were sent to Mingo County? And how many pills were sent to Mingo County pharmacies other than the Stroh Snyder's? You look across and you've got the answer. Um, we can also multiply and um, divide. Uh, so uh, uh, why might we want to um, do multiplication uh, or uh, division? Well, there's a, a bunch of different ways um, we'll see one when we get down to uh, the uh, formula for calculating the share of total as a percent. Um, but an easy one would be to create a new column here called um, average uh, pills per record in which we divide the uh, total number of pills by the number of records. So G2 divided by H2. So on average at the Stroh Snyder Pharmacy, again G2 equals G2 divided by H2, there were 1,712 pills um, in each order. And remember that handy drag down thing. Uh, oh, before I do that, I'm going to format this. There's no reason to have five decimal places after. Nobody cares that much. I'm going to round it to one decimal place using my little percent button. I'm gonna click, drag down. Okay, so um, the number of pills per record sort of varied pretty greatly. Um, it looks like Snow Strider, uh, on every sort of record of, of shipment, we're getting sort of a lot more pills than um, uh, say uh, other people uh, or other pharmacies with the exception of this Tug Valley Pharmacy. Um, so yeah, so average pills per record, that's a way we can use um, uh, dividing. Multiplication also comes in handy uh, sometimes too. Uh, okay, so we already showed you there's basic math and then there's like built-in formulas. So um, uh, we can um, also use some of the other ones here. So up in this formula list, I showed you some of the basic ones, sum, average, count, max, min. Um, there's also like an insane number of other ones, including things that allow you to like formulas to scrape the web and um, work with financial data and uh, tran automatically translate. This is pretty sick. Translate words using Google Translate. Um, all kinds of functions built right into Excel, uh, uh, Google Sheets, which are, are super helpful. 
Um, so sum was one of these like named functions, right? It adds up a range of cells. Uh, now we're going to do average, which is uh, pretty, pretty standard. So what was the average number of pills sent to Mingo County pharmacies? And again, I'm going to wrap that text. And here I'm going to write equals average and check it out. It knew to type average. I wonder if that's because uh, uh, it knew to suggest average. And I'm guessing that's because like uh, I wrote average over there. Who knows? Uh, Google knows everything. Um, so I'm going to write average. So equals average G2 to G17. And notice it was smart enough to pick the range here and not pull in these computed columns. Because if I, if I actually took it to G19, uh, get an error. Really boost the average when you're working in the totals there. Uh, okay, so the average was um, 2 million pills. So why is this uh, important? Well, it gives us a sense of, you know, what a sort of typical pharmacy might have been, although average is not without its own problems. Median might be a better measure here. Um, but certainly it shows that um, for the county, Stroh-Snyder was... Um, uh, kind of an outlier, uh, maybe suggesting it's worth looking sort of further at, at them and, and their role in this. Uh, and who knows what we'll find? Uh, maybe it's perfectly legitimate, um, but uh, this kind of analysis can help get us to the next phase of, uh, of our analysis. Um, okay, let's see if we've got, again, crazy number of formulas. I don't use all these. Let's go ahead and do median. So average, right, it takes the formula, it, it takes all of these and adds them all together and then divides by the number of, of records. So in this case, um, 16. Um, so it divides 38 million by 16. That's how you get to this. Um, median can be a better number. It's actually just the, the midpoint um, in the data. Um, and it can help um, uh, it can help give you a truer representation of um, of um, of what the actual midpoint of your data is uh, when you have say one or two outliers sort of skewing the numbers. So let's do that. What was the median number of pills sent to Mingo County Pharmacy? So half are going to be below and half are going to be above. And again, equals median G2 to G17. And the median is 577705. So um, kind of somewhere at this point here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight above, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, below. Um, notice that it's quite smaller <laughs> than the. Um, than the average, and, and that, that may be because there are a lot of like really big shipment places um, and uh, only a handful of, of smaller ones. Uh, okay, um, we can also use um, min and max, um, which is helpful. Um, uh, you can sort of get this from sorting too, but um, this is another way of doing it. So which, what, how many pills were sent to the highest uh, receiving pharmacy in Mingo County. Okay. And again, we're gonna wrap that text. Uh, and the formula looks like this, equals min, oh sorry, max uh, G2 to G17. Okay, so the highest value in that range, which this wasn't too hard to figure out just because we have um, this sorted, uh, but the highest number is 13168. And uh, I find max actually pretty useful when working with large data sets. Uh, and then there's the cousin to max or the twin, identical mirror twin. I don't know. Uh, how many many pills 
were sent to the lowest receiving pharmacy in Mingo County. And again, I'm gonna wrap that text. And it's the same thing, just instead of max, it's min. Look at that, min suggested. And the answer is 40, and we can go look at our data and see that David Nielsen, uh, Williamson, um, such a small number, it'd be interesting to learn what you could about him. Could be a potential story in there too. Uh, okay, so um, uh, there's also the, um, uh, the, uh, the share of total, which is a kind of an interesting function. Um, I don't know if um, if there actually is a um, like a sh a, sh um, a share of total or not. Actually, is a named function um, or even like percent percentile? Maybe not. But I'll show you how to do it um, uh, by creating a, a new column here. So. Um, you know, it's helpful to be able to know they had 13 pills, but another way we might ask is, um, you know, what percentage of um, shipments to Mingo County actually went to um, each pharmacy, as opposed to a raw number. This might help us get a um, just a little bit of a sense of who is meaningful. So create a new column called percent of total. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, and I almost always get this backwards, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do it the first way. So we're gonna divide equals g two divided by the total g eighteen. So the total number of pills divided by the uh, first for this first one, Stroh Snyder, divided by um, uh, divided by the number of uh, total pills on Domingo County. So we get 0.34. You can actually make that a percent. So by clicking the little percent button. So 34.1. Okay. So let's copy that down. And we get all kinds of crazy stuff going on here. So this kind of looks like maybe it might be right. This is insane. This is obviously not right. That's crazy. And divide by zero is uh, you know, a thing that happens when the universe breaks. All right, so what's going on here? So this first, first thing we wrote looks great, right? Uh, G2 divided by G18. Okay, so again, that's what we want. We want the total dosage units, the number of pills for this one pharmacy by the number of pills for all pharmacies. So, um, that's what this is, G2 divided by G18. This next one is G3 divided by G19. That's not right, is it? Is it? This is the total number of pills sent to pharmacies other than this Stroh Snyder pharmacy. So we're starting to get messed up. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, you know, we could do that, G3 divided by G18. And then we could come down and do equals G4 divided by G18. But I know if you guys are as busy as I am, you got a lot of stuff to do. Um, you got a lot of stuff to do. And uh, we just don't want to be having to retype this over over again. Again, not just about time, but when you retype things over and over, you reintroduce the possibility of mistakes. So a thing I can do on this first thing is use um, a dollar sign in my cell reference, and that's this G18, to fix the location. So um, put a dollar sign in front of G and a dollar sign in front of 18. All right, and now watch, watch what happens as I pull this down. Okay, this one here, G3 divided by G18, G4 divided by G18. This is all correct here. And the reason is, is that um, I've left the flexibility. You don't have the dollar signs in G2 here, right? But I fixed the denominator. So as we pull down, that continues to be the same cell. So yeah, so what do we see? A third, 
you can imagine this being a sentence in a story. Uh, a third of um, opioid shipments in Mingo County between 06 and 12 uh, of hydrocodone and oxycodone went to the Stroh Snyder Pharmacy in Kerman. So it would definitely be worth figuring out uh, uh, who they are. Um, okay, and then uh, the last thing we're going to do is... Um, is, is do uh, what's called a, a rank function, and then we're gonna end it here for the day. So we may wanna know like, um, where does each pharmacy rank in order uh, for, um, uh, for most, um, most, most pill shipped, or we could even rank it as least pill shipped. Um, so we're gonna use the rank function for that. So I'm going to uh, make a new column here and call it rank pills, uh, rank of pills in county. And we're gonna write a new function here. So equals rank and G2. And then the range we wanna rank in, G2 colon G17, okay. So it ranks first. All right, so let's pull down. Okay, there's a problem here. What has happened? So now we've got G3, but the range in which it's ranked, right? So this was, where does this G2 cell rank out of all of the values in in the list of from g2 to g17 g3 to g18 that's not good g4 to g19 that's not good all right so we we got some problems here so we're going to fix it with that same trick so again we want the first thing to float but now we're going to fix the range g2 to g17 and as we fill down, this changes. This is G3, this is G4, G5, et cetera, et cetera. But the number of, um, uh, but the range stays fixed. So we see, you know, we could have answered this with this record number, but this is a useful thing um, for lots of other reasons. Um, uh, so yeah, from uh, highest rank, highest to lowest. Uh, okay, so I think that um, is um, all of the uh, uh, the uh, sort of using Google Spreadsheets um, sort of version of this. So what are you going to do? You're going to take um, this edited document um, and you're going to turn this on at Elm so I can see that you were able to um, faithfully re- uh, reproduce it. Um, uh, a thing I would like you to do just a little bit of reporting on um, is um, if you had done this analysis, now you're um, uh, you're armed with some information about like a, a lead essentially, a tip for where you might go. Um, so through some creative Googling and research, um, maybe looking at other stories that have been written. Um, uh, I would like you to um, find what you can about Stroh Snyder in Kermit, West Virginia. Um, see if anything's been written on them, and I'll um, probably ask you about it in, uh, in class next week. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks again, and 